Ed Sheeran and Castle on the Hill, morning, 9.23. And uh, the studio this morning, Sally, has been invaded, invaded by some crazy people. Yeah, but we're loving the crazy, to be honest. It, it matches <laughs> our crazy a little bit. I think so. Good morning to uh, Omar Samra and Omar Noor this morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you both. Thank you very much for joining us uh, here this morning. Uh, let's start with you. Uh, uh, well, if anybody doesn't know, now, um, I know um, uh, you guys are pretty well known. Uh, but for anybody who doesn't know your background, uh, Omar Samra, can we call it? What, can, how do we differentiate? Omar two. Omar two. We, oh. it's it's still debatable. Okay. We're still debating the whole story. How long, how long is the show? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he's Omar two. He's I'm Omar, two. Omar one. Okay, that's Omar Noor there. Yeah. Omar one. Yeah, okay. I like that. Omar Samra. Omar, Omar, Omar Samra does not look happy about being no. known as Omar no. too. It's okay, he's not awake yet. He won't realize it. <laughs> it's fine. Tell us your background, uh, Omar Samra. Omar 1. Omar 1. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, my background is uh, I'm a bit of an adventurer. I've, I've done a few things in the past uh, few years. Uh, mountains, uh, polar adventures, and uh, now I'm trying to embark on something completely different. Um, yeah, which I'm guessing we're going to talk about a little bit. Yeah, we are. We're going to talk about this, this new adventure. sounds sounds pretty exciting, but we'll get to that in, in a moment. Uh, Omar two one. Oh, Omar yeah, Noor. Yeah. Uh, tell us about your background. Um, my background is quite different, actually. I um, age 29. I'm 105 kilos. Didn't do any sports. Nothing. Getting into my car and my beautiful suit, and I hear. What is that? Yeah, the suit stairs. Aww. Yeah, and it didn't happen once. It happened twice, sadly. <gasps> it was a sad moment. And I decided, you know, something had to change. I had to change my lifestyle. I discovered triathlon. Mm -hmm. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Started to lose weight. Felt good. Looked good in my clothes. And uh, before you know it, I turned pro at age 31. First wow. Egyptian professional triathlete. I mean, that's a turnaround, isn't it, in two and years? You know what? That is. You know, it's one of these things... I, a lot of people say a lot of naysayers come out a lot of people are like no you can't do this and, mm -hmm. and I think most people in the world like limit their themselves by, by, by what's acceptable or what people believe is doable yeah. so I represent Egypt in the Olympic circuit tried to make it to Rio got injured oh, uh, no. yeah well it's alright it's part of the journey and then <laughs> this is when when Omar too came came to me <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, suggested this crazy adventure that uh, well, we're about which, to embark which on. I'm regretting <laughs> <laughs> but there's going to be 39 days of this well, oh, uh, tell, tell us then uh, about this, this this new challenge this crazy adventure so I'm really interested in uh, in a Adventures are challenges that are based on sort of human power or just using the, the, the forces of nature, the elements. Um, about three, four years ago, I was crossing the Atlantic uh, in a plane. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was just these hours just kept passing by this huge expanse of water. And I just wondered, wow, it would be pretty cool to, to be able to like cross this on your own steam. Have and you seen a doctor about this? <laughs> <laughs> because this isn't a normal reaction. Normally, you're flying over the Atlantic, you're thinking, oh, when can I get to my destination? No, oh, it'd be nice to make this a bit longer and do it <laughs> like, in a boat. Yeah, like 60 days instead of six hours. <laughs> well, so basically, uh, the idea started to form very, very, uh, very slowly. And then I started to think, well, if I'm going to do this, um, initially, I thought maybe I'd do it as a team of four, uh, but then I had to find three people that were crazy enough and committed enough and, uh, um, you know, to do something like that. Yeah. Um, and I realized that was pretty challenging. Then I was like, well, well doing it as a pair sounds sounds cooler because I would never imagine doing it on my own. Um, it would no. be horrific. And so, and, so, um, and so I thought about Omar and I met in 2013. Um, he was preparing for the Olympics, so I thought there's no way he can take on something like this. It's just going to be too much. When I knew that he's, he'd been injured and then he sort of stepped down and he was on his way to recovery, um, I came to Dubai and, and said if, asked him if he had 10 minutes to spare. <laughs> um, you went to Dubai and asked if he yeah. had 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. Are you free? Dude, that's it. You know, I said, Omar, come in, come in. So we're in this conference room and it's all glass around us and we're, we're riding ferociously on those boards and Omar is like, look, this is what we need to do. You want to row the Atlantic with me? I'm like, well... I'm not going to say no, but what is this all about? So the next thing you know, we send an email to the race organizers. They come in and they're like, here's the application. Two hours later, we're signed up and paid up. Oh, and wow. they go, this is a world record. We've never had somebody take two hours to make a decision like wow. this. It usually takes a which, year or two. Which probably isn't a, like a good thing, right? I think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I think it, you know, it's a fantastic thing. Are most of the things that you guys do, do they tend to be sort of that quickly? 
uh, decisions? Uh, for, for me, definitely. Yeah, uh, me too. All my big decisions in life have been based on sort of intuition. So okay. I try and I try and figure out what I'm getting into and then I just take a leap of faith. That's uh, how I do it. Uh, same way. I believe in that. I believe that. Look, I mean, you can sit here all day long and say, oh, I want to lose weight. Oh, I want to lose weight. Oh, I want to do a, a race or whatever. It's, you're never going to wake up in the morning and go to the gym. You sign up. You pay, yeah. and next thing you know, you, you, the fear starts no, to I've get you going. Bef- I've yeah. done that before. I've signed yeah. up and paid, but still never gone. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, yeah. we'll take this offline. <laughs> I, I got you. Okay. I got you. Oh, so, I love it. So uh, tell us exactly uh, what this challenge is. Tell exactly what you are going to be doing. So basically, on December 12th, 2017, we will uh, depart um, La Gomera, which is in West Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's part of a, it's a sort of a Portuguese yeah, Portuguese uh, or Spanish. Portuguese, yeah. Portuguese Spanish colony. It's where Christopher Columbus will have sailed to, okay. to crossing the Atlantic. Okay. And then from there we will row unsupported, uh, which means that we carry our own food, our own uh, we, wow. uh, we we our own desalinator that to get fresh water to cook and eat. We uh, we have you know solar panels, navigation, GPS, five thousand kilometers until we get to Antigua, which is in the Caribbean, which is the first landmass that you that you mm-hmm. cross. It sounds like Life of Pi without the tiger. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Or or maybe with the tiger. I don't know which Omar is going to turn into that. I mean, that's the thing, though. The the thing about this is so crazy that people Mm. don't think about. Most crews do two hours on, two hours off, Mm -hmm. day and night. Right. 24-7 until they get there. So you're sleep deprived. You're on a boat that's seven meters by two meters. And you're bored. You're bored. You're tired. You're cranky. You're, you know. Let, let me yeah. just let me just say this. A um, few months ago, like Omar went to the UK. <laughs> he went to Rannoch, which is the boat builders, the guys that we hopefully get a commission to build the boat. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a buddy of mine, Greg, had done this race before. Uh, the, a guy I climbed Everest with, and then he was. So Omar managed to take his boat out for a little jolly, kind of like 15, 15 minute ro- uh, <laughs> see, boat see ride. See what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> And I was pretty excited because, you know, Omar actually got to experience the actual boat. And, you know, he came back and I was like, how was it? Like, you know, was it it cool? And Omar was like, "Uh, it was the most boring 15 minutes of my life. (laughs) And it was, guys. It was horrendous. So you can't manage 15 minutes. No, it was it was it was agonizing. It was it was literally I was like, why would anybody want to do this? And then I remembered, oh, I'm doing this. So I mean, why then? Okay, why? This is the deal. Look, when I started losing weight and whatnot Mm -hmm. i was like the people's triathlete okay a lot of people were like oh he's he's like me you know i'm a nine to fiver i was not healthy i didn't Mm -hmm. have healthy habits of any kind or any sort so when i turned pro people were really fired up about it and when i went to like the olympic level people like yes Mm -hmm. if he can do it i can too but after a while the story starts to fade a little bit because you're a professional athlete now for eight years Okay, yeah, that's what he does. He goes and does races, and he's good at them. So what? I wanted to challenge myself. I want to do something that reminds everybody, guys, no. If you set your mind to something, you make the sacrifices, Mm -hmm. and you get it done. I know nothing about rowing. I know nothing about the (laughs) ocean. I know nothing about navigation. I know nothing. I mean, I know nothing. I'm not a do-it-yourself guy. I'm a little bit of a princess. Like, if, 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 a light, if a light bulb, yeah, if a light bulb burns, I'm like, oh, oh, I don't know. What are we going to do? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What do we do? Right? It, 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 so we're going to have to learn all of that stuff from source. So no one can say, oh, but you guys, that's what you guys do. No. Mm-hmm. Have so you, not what we do. So you, naturally, team selection is really important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you ever held an oar before, either of you? <laughs> well, the, the first time I, I did I was one. recently. Well, really? Yeah. Wow. We did a photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. But you looked at, on, that, on that photo shoot, on the photo and stuff, you looked like you knew what you were doing. So that's the main thing. Exactly. Um, yeah. Which is it's always the most important part. I think uh, um, we, we watched a documentary. Uh, so I think the thing that differentiates people who want to do these things and people who don't mm-hmm. is um, you watch something really horrific and you feel like, <laughs> Wow, this is awesome. That's, where can we get started? And we watched a documentary of two British guys rowing the Atlantic about 10 years ago. And one of them was a two-time Olympic gold medalist rower for Britain. Right. And the other guy, like a seasoned adventure. And the, the, the British guy, um, the, and they did it in something like 40-something, 50 days. And he basically was, was crying every single day. <laughs> um, every day. Wow, That's yeah. because, because because you something can something to look forward to. You can be an, you can be an athlete training like six hours a day and that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but the kind of mental, you know, uh, torture or the mental sort of suffering that you go through in something yeah. like this is 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 completely different. And ultimately, actually, 
makes you a better person and at least you get to know more about who you are mm-hmm. some of it might not be very pleasant um, but it's we, we believe that like you know people spend most of their lives exploring a very narrow band of their full potential mm. it doesn't have to be on the physical level it could be on any level but when you really put yourself in these challenges it really gives you an opportunity to to really you know get to know yourself more Pe- people people are so afraid of failure i mean that's yeah. one of the things I, I always say like i love to to talk i don't know if you guys can tell but i love to talk <laughs> and one of the, the things that i usually touch on on my talks is like the fear of failure is the mm. biggest crusher of dreams it's not failing that crushes it it's the fear of failure so mm. people don't even want to try they don't and step out they don't step out mm-hmm. they, they, they don't realize that successful people what successful people realize that it's being successful is a string of failures and mm-hmm. learning from them and getting back up and doing it again and getting back up and doing it. and that's the only way you do something new something exciting something something gets you fired up you know that you feel like you're alive well on that note uh, we'll take us we'll take <laughs> we'll take a small break there was a there was an inspirational uh, yeah. piece there uh, we'll take a small uh, break uh, we'll come back we'll play a couple of songs and then we'll come back if you have a question for either of the omars uh, do let us know this morning sms 1042 tweet at 9 fm or facebook as we were with omar samra and omar noor we're o2 man o2, o2. <laughs> well, we'll get into the name in uh, just a little bit this is Sean Paul's brand new song by the way it's called body Heads to the beat. Bye. Bye. Alessia Cara and Wild Things, good morning. Sunday's morning show with Mark and Sally. And we're joined by two Omars, Omar Samra and Omar Noor, who are going to be embarking on a challenge that is like no other. Uh, good morning, guys. Morning. Good Hello. Good morning. Morning. Still, still here with <laughs> still us. Still here. Still cray cray. Uh, <laughs> um, so you're going to be rowing from, uh, what was the place you started again? The starting point? Um, La Gomera. La Gomera. Okay. Is that the Canary Islands? That's Correct. where we finished. Okay, that's okay. That's where you finish. No, no, no. Canary Islands is where we start. You we guys start. Oh. Okay, you and got you, you finish in Antigua. <laughs> yeah, correct. Wait, what are we doing? Tell Omar what we're doing. <laughs> so Can you... somebody please tell him what we're doing? <laughs> I hope you don't start in uh, opposite ends. That would well, be the, the wrong be, place. Be I feel like we're going to be rowing the other, you know, opposite <laughs> of each other. We'll just stay for the same place <laughs> yeah. for two months. So uh, hopefully they'll be starting in West Africa <laughs> and then finishing up in Antigua. And this should take about how long? World record is 40 days. The world record is 40 days. So 39. Okay, you're aiming for 39 That's, guys, days. Guys, let's do this. So you guys have never <laughs> rowed, but you're hoping to break the world record. Listen, Mark, this is, okay, look, you have to understand something. I don't have a dial. I have a switch. I'm either on or I'm off. Okay. Uh-huh. So if I'm on, I'm going to go all in. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, on my initials, by the way, are on. But uh, <laughs> Now, Omar, now, Omar Samra. It was Samra, written in the stars. Yeah, Omar Samra, O2, he's... Um, He's very different than me, right? Like he's all okay. About so basically, there's a, it's a philosophical debate. So okay. I want to finish the race. Um, Omar wants to win it. Um, okay. So for the sake of just getting on, I just said, well, well, we'll try and win it. That's cool. Right? <laughs> no. but once we get on the boat, it's just going to be about getting to the other no, side. But see, but, the other, but honestly, the thing is this: the more I, we discover about this, like in, in in my sport, for example, majority of the things are within your control. Uh, when you do something like this, you can't go out and say, hey, I'm going to break a world record mm-hmm. and really mean it. Because the thing is this, you can prepare to break a world record, so yeah. you need to be completely ready. Everything has to be dialed in. But you're at the mercy of the elements, the wind, the storms. You you, you catch a bad storm and you're having to, pa- well, we can talk about this, para anchor and stay in your cabin for five days and can row. What are you going to do? It doesn't matter how fit you are. It doesn't matter how ready you are. No, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, how are you training for this then? So, actually, the, the rowing is a, I want to say a small element, but it's one of many elements of this. Um, mm-hmm. We need to transform our bodies from that of endurance sort of athletes, which is kind of where we are right now, to becoming more of a power um, strength endurance type athletes because your your cardiovascular system is never activated during the row so your heart rate never goes really high Okay, but you need to be very strong and you need to be able to sustain physical effort for a very long time yeah I'd be done I mean uh, like after like a couple of rows I'd be like ah this is a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean but to keep that up day after day after, I mean there's nothing else to do as well I guess yeah I mean there's the there's the sleep deprivation we, we talked about like you know bringing on music audio books um, Omar's oh, obviously never gonna run yeah. out of things to and Omar, well, I talk a lot, so that, that'll be entertaining for Omar. But then Omar, Omar actually has a secret uh, talent. He 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 hip hops. 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a hip hop. He's oh, rap. Whatever. Okay. I mean, you know what I mean. So hip hop. There's gonna be, he hip hops. He hip hops around, right? Oh, well, so, we don't want any hopping on the no, boat. <laughs> but he's gonna be entertaining me with that, which I think is gonna be pretty awesome. We're well, gonna have some well, battles. Soon. I would hate for for you not to share it with. Well, the kind of profanity that comes out of my mouth. Okay. Right. Okay. Then maybe we don't share. It's fair enough. It's only suitable if there's just an ocean around us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. We'll we'll leave that with you. Yeah. Um, and, so, NWA is my thing. Like, if you guys know who they are, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. He, he, he really loves it. He has a little Detroit in him. And <laughs> you guys, a little, a little black person yeah. inside. Well, you guys are getting to know each other yeah. uh, now, aren't you? I mean, you don't know each other. You're not like best of friends. Like you you're know, like it, homies. You know well, every single thing. We're, every we're, single we're thing. Pretty, we're pretty tight. Yeah, um, it's weird. We, we met. We met in 2013 uh, through a common friend. Introduced us. Like, oh, you guys should meet. Um, we clicked immediately. We're very different people, but we complement each other really well um, socially, but also like in the way we work. Um, and it's been good, you know. Like ultimately, you're never gonna really know how it's gonna go down until it goes down. Um, I've been in many situations where I've spent sort of weeks on end with people in a mm. small confined tent and stuff like that. So um, I think it'll be good. The the mental stuff is gonna really be difficult. The rowing, mm -hmm. like I said, it's a small element. You've got the blisters on your hands. You've got the the sores on your bum from the salt water mm -hmm. and the friction with the seat. You know, every every couple of days you need to get under the boat, clean it so that the barnacles don't slow down the oh. hydrodynamics. Wow! Yeah. Wow! God Omar knows what's gonna be inside the that. water. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's right at the edge there of like. Uh, and, and and the toughest thing I think, I mean, the the, the one thing that like we think about a bunch is you're gonna hit a storm. Okay? Yeah. You are gonna hit a storm. If you're lucky, you don't hit a hurricane, which is cool. But um, <laughs> at some point, you're gonna have to. When that happens, they they call you up and they say, "Hey, you're heading straight for a storm. Okay. Uh, get ready." And you have to put everything away. You buckle. You tie everything down. And you both go inside a little cabin that's meant for one person. But both of you have to go in there and you have to, to seal it. Actually, before you do that, you deploy something called the para anchor, which is a little parachute. That, okay. Well, it's not so little. It's massive. And you throw it in the water and basically it expands so that it, it doesn't, uh, the storm doesn't drag you in the wrong direction wow. too much. Right? Oh. So you're still getting dragged. You're seeing your heart earned miles slowly <laughs> slip away right while you're inside this cabin and it's like a washing machine so you're getting sick and you get and, and, and it's sweaty and you're hot and so that i'm not really looking forward to having like omar's feet right in my face <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah i think yeah. omar's feet will be the least of your worries right, to be yeah, honest. probably but <laughs> the other the other one which is uh, which is a bit scary that we do think about is is when it's when it's nighttime and you're rowing even if there's no storm um, and then the moon's not there, and so it's just pitch black. Where did the moon go? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you expecting the moon to disappear at any point? We'll make it I mean, it, it, what is it? Why, 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 what do you mean? If it's cloudy? No, I mean, no. There's, well, there's, there's some mark. I don't know, but, um, you know. I'm not too uh, wise. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're too old for for me to be telling you this. But there are some days in the month where there's no, the moon is not. The okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, isn't okay. It? Can I ask if you're so worried about storms and everything? You're sitting out on the 12th of December. Yeah, that's good though. D December is that a good time? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. to me, that's winter. No, yeah. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> the, the reason why is because by the time you make it to Antigua, you're before the hurricane season in the Americas, okay. and you do not want to hit hurricane season in the Americas. That sounds fair. Yeah. 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 And, <laughs> and, and the other thing is, is the boat itself um, is self-riding. Okay. So it can capsize. Uh, and what Omar was talking about, at night, a rogue wave comes and you're not prepared for it mm. or whatnot. It can easily capsize the boat. You're tethered to the boat so you don't disappear into the, the darkness of the ocean. Mm. And it's supposed to basically to come back. Itself. Yeah, to ride itself. What about, supposedly. What about, the, what about the sharks? Yeah. <laughs> what, what about the little sharky things yeah. in the water? You yeah. know, you go in the water, sharks in the water. Th that's so why Omar will be doing most of the cleaning of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we talked about that, and and, uh, and we've just uh, we've seen, seen these guys that have invented this uh, this technology, which is like a bracelet that you wear, emits certain kind of radio frequency. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, and then 104.2? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just my sharks, shrill voice. <laughs> sharks do not like. <laughs> They're not big fans of that of them. No. <laughs> The shark is actually sponsored by. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so this no. gives out a frequency and and, and repels but, sharks. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot. Yeah, but uh, it's I don't know if it's been really tested. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let them know. We'll Good luck with that. Know. Yeah. No, but you know, but there's, there's, there's some beautiful things about this trip too. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously you get a chance to see like whales, dolphins, like all, all kinds of things. You know, that, that part's amazing. 
I mean, the idea for me, I know it sounds horrific to some people, but the idea that that boat is two meters by seven meters and for like whatever long it takes, that's all you need to worry about. Mm. That your whole life mm. is just this two by seven. That's yeah. something very calming. Um, and just like, you know, you basically switch off. You, you don't have your phone. You have nothing. No Facebook, no Twitter? No Facebook, that's actually no Twitter. Not, that's not necessarily true because we will be probably sending messages we'll through be, our satellite We'll be communicating phone. with people through satellite oh, okay. and then they'll be yeah. doing the, the posting for us, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Can I just ask? I mean, I have to I have to ask this question. <laughs> so what are you hoping to get out of this, each one oh. of you? Like, Because obviously it's a big thing. A lot of people listening are, are experiencing what I'm feeling. Awe and at the same time Thank fear you. and at the same time like you guys are crazy. And all, So what are you trying to accomplish on an individual level, the, the I, both of you? You know, I, for me, I think what Omar had touched on before, I think the vast majority of people including myself in the past like you you just live your life average right you wake up mm -hmm. it's pretty safe it's never it's never too dangerous and it's never too amazing either it's sort of like right in the middle you go to work you you show up at the radio show you do your show you get up <laughs> yeah, not, why are you looking not. at me man no, guys, why are you looking on. at me i was just joking i swear I was just, so you live but That's most terrible, people do dude. live their lives in the middle and and i've realized uh, over the years that the the most alive i've ever felt is not in the middle it's when it's really up high or really down low and and an experience like this you can't pretend we mm -hmm. all pretend a little bit of who we are you can't pretend anymore it just breaks you down systematically and you deal with things that are very interesting uh, you see a side of yourself that you may never discover if you just stay right in the middle to me this is like what we're going to be doing is while we're doing it is like life as it's most vivid like it could be bad or could be good but you're really you know you're really kind of living it and then, and i think that um you know we you obviously we there's a chance out there that we we don't make it as, mm -hmm. as in like we don't compete the race and everything like that but we we will have tried mm -hmm. and we'll have put everything into it so you know from we've been preparing for a few months there's a few months to go and we're going to be as ready as we can be and that journey there's so much learning like i'm excited about the idea like how much we're going to learn we're going to learn stuff about navigation about the ocean about the elements about ourselves about how to you know how to prepare for you know it's just it's just going to be an incredible experience i don't think you can simulate this kind of experience in just your everyday life and no. so we will have experienced something that for better or worse something that only less than 250 people have i mean that have actually completed that race which is less mm. than people that have gone to space so it's pretty special. That and, is pretty cool. And, and hopefully in the process, inspire a few people. And yeah. somebody maybe is listening and goes, oh my God, you know what? And it doesn't have to be an ocean. And maybe maybe it's a 5K. Maybe it's whatever. Well, uh, it's it's been fascinating so far to speak to you. We are going to talk some more. We're going to do some messages uh, as well that people have been sending in uh, this morning. But uh, first of all, we'll take a little break. Uh, this is Machine Gun Kelly and Hayley Steinfeld. Brand new music is called At My Best. Brutimaz and 24 Karat Magic. Yeah, we're here with Omar Samra and Omar Noor who are taking on a huge challenge of rowing across the Atlantic this December. Hi, guys. Welcome uh, once again. Uh, what's happened here? We've got, I think um, uh, Omar, Omar Samra's chair is caught on the wire. <laughs> okay. Um, but I just wanted to say, because what, what's the date exactly you're going? 12th of December. Now, you know when the new Star Wars movie comes out, right? <laughs> when is it? Uh, it's about the 17th. Oh, uh, we're going to... Oh, okay, we'll, we'll start we'll later. We'll stream it. Yeah. <laughs> are you, wait, 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 wait. Are you, are you a Star Wars fan? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. You no, know, you're not really fans. Choose, choose your next words carefully. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, I watch everything. I enjoy it, yes. That's for something not, to not, talk, not a good answer. But. For something to talk about <laughs> on the boat, you're going to have to you know, watch all the, all the movies. So although, you know. although Game of Thrones will have been out, so y'all can have that debate. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's what's going to happen I'm in the next big season. big into Game of Thrones. Yeah. Big. Good man. <laughs> Same. Yeah. <laughs> now you're gonna, okay. So it's going to take you about 40 days, I'm a you're hoping. <laughs> <laughs> there's not going to be any competition, as you can see. No, I can see. There's, yeah. no, there's no competitive no. spirit. Far be it from Zero. you. Are there, are there anecdotes that you haven't told each other yet about each other's lives? Oh. Uh, is there stuff that you don't know about each other that you've been saving up? I won't tell him that. I'll tell him that on the boat. Um, well, basically, I, I cut my hair as a sort of, uh, you know, just to make Omar feel better. Oh, Lord. Because he was, he was, he was going a bit thin there. In the... <laughs> it's just, it's just the look. It's the look. He doesn't like the look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there's a lot of things. I, th I, I think there's so many stories. I haven't purposefully withheld any any stories, uh -huh. waiting to be like dropped 
drop a bomb on him, you know, <laughs> in the boat and just be like, oh my God. But uh, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about each other. We have to do this interview after you guys are back. Yeah, please yeah. come and join us when you come back. We need to have, you know, like... If, the, the, if, if yeah. you come back. If we come, if we ever come back. <laughs> you know what we should do? We should, we should, we should call in. Yes, I'm not even kidding. Yes, do yeah. do call, call in, in on the show. Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah, of course. Get all the troubles firsthand. Yeah, uh, we've got some really lovely messages uh, from people uh, to you guys this morning. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, which I'm sure uh, uh, people would like us to read to you. Uh, Hania uh, says, uh, "How is it? That, w- what is it like with the rowing and with the sun and the heat and the sleep? What is it going to be like uh, with that?" And says, "This is amazing, you guys, with the sun and stuff." I didn't think about the sun. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to be. We were saying this on in the break. We're gonna have to roll, you know, pretty much um, naked most of the time. I don't know if that was that. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Okay. Not to say that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, so that's be awesome for Omar, but <laughs> 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 lucky Omar. Um, no, I mean, will it? What will? Will it be hot? Yeah. Yes, in, yes, in, yeah. Across yeah, for, the Atlantic. For, for the most part. Then we have the there's, there's a stormy bits and stuff like that that won't be won't be good. I mean, the heat. I mean, she makes a really good point, right? Because the heat the heat you're gonna come close to the equator or whatnot mm. and it, it becomes an issue and it becomes an issue also because you're rowing two hours on two hours off two hours on two hours off that's what most people 24/7. do yeah 24 7 so what happens is you you're you need to get rest during the, the two hours off but if it's hot outside and inside the cabin you have to lock the cabin in order for the boat in case it it turns over and needs to self right oh. it ha- has to have locked cabin so it's really humid and it becomes very difficult but it's all stuff that you have to practice you have to practice and you got to go and and, and and try it all out. Okay. That's really interesting. Well, we have another message here that came through. It says, Hi, O2. This is Hiba, <laughs> and we're so proud of you guys. We can't wait to support you on your mission. And my kids are so curious to see it happening, and we wish you luck. Oh, awesome. that's really Amazing. nice. Uh, Thanks, how is Hiba. Basma says, uh, I'm sure you guys are more than aware of the dangers accompanying this adventure, but I'm wondering how you are preparing mentally for such risks. What's the And um, what are the mental dangers as well? Um, well, basically, it's the you know coming from the this is sleep deprivation and exhaustion will probably put you in not such a g- great mood most of the time, and so you know you know you need to be able to deal with that. I think you need to be quite a positive person, mm. um, a person that's able to just let go and think bad things are happening, but you just don't have to you know attach yourself to them, um, take things, be more in the, as mom- as in the moment as you yeah. can. That's really the key. Um, we've signed up to this. We already understand very well what we've put ourselves. We're going to put ourselves through, um, and we accept. Like we accept the fact that there's going to be these dangers and these challenges, um, and we don't expect it to be pleasant. We know it's going to be hard, uh, but we know that within those, like you know, lots and lots of hard and difficult moments. There are going to be some moments in there that are just going to be amazing, and we're going to remember them for the rest of our lives. Yeah, and as an athlete, for me personally, like uh, one of the things that makes a huge difference is talking to sports psychologists, and mm. and and people don't often talk about that, but that's that, that's what it takes to to sort of unlock the next level. And uh, usually, your body your body can do way more than you think it can do. The limiter is always the brain, mm-hmm. and so I think also other than 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 practicing, like we said, like going out on, on in, in the water, doing things together, seeing how it feels and understanding how we, we each react. It's also talking to, to professionals, talking to people that that, that um, uh, have dealt for with athletes or individuals that face death, for example, mm. right? Because it's one of the things you want and to be And we're talking to, to a lot of ocean rowers as well. People have completed the race yeah. and have done it before. And so getting advice from them, that, that, you know, that's, that's key as well. Right? Huge. I just I can't imagine like you know curling into a ball and like crying my eyes out <laughs> and then having to get up and row again like uh, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Well, you just described Omar's uh, Omar's day. <laughs> Omar, Omar I don't has, cry. Omar has already said that he's not gonna cry. Yeah, I don't. I don't cry. You don't, don't cry. cry. No, I, last time I cried, mm. I was thirteen. Oh, this, I, this rem- will be fun. I remember it vividly. But I mean, listen. If I do cry, mm. I'm not ashamed about it. Okay, I'll make sure it's on video and you guys and, 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 and get it to you guys. Please do. Yeah. Uh, hello to uh, Lobno Nabil, who says uh, this is for Omar uh, Samra. Uh, says lots of respect to an inspirational man who's changed the lives of many. You are a role model. 
Thank you. And also Bola uh, gets in touch uh, this morning. Yes, yeah, says to the Amars, you just touched my heart. You said we limit ourselves by what people believe is doable. Reflecting on that, do you think I can learn swimming like a pro at the age of 33? Absolutely. I'm sorry, I'm going to take that one. Yes. Because, <laughs> yes. Uh, just uh, who, who was this from? Bola. Bola? Okay, Bola. Uh, absolutely. I learned how to swim properly, a com- a competitive swimming, mm. at age 29. And two years later, I was, a, I was a professional triathlete. If you set your mind to it, you can do anything. But I'm going to tell you this. It's not just all roses and unicorns and rainbows. It, you have to Just thinking that you want to do it is not enough. Go ahead. You have to sacrifice. There's going to be a lot of things that are unpleasant mm. on, 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 your, on your way. But if you set your mind to it, I have zero doubt that you wouldn't call back and say, Hey guys, I'm swimming even competitively if you want to. But we also want to like just reflect a bit about what like actually success means, and it's not really like you know being the, the, the you know the top triathlete or reaching the summit of the mountain, or whatever. It's actually waking up every morning and just doing your best, whatever that best is. Sometimes you're a bit short mm-hmm. of of what you want, sometimes a bit more, but that's really it. And then there's so much out of your control, especially on a row like this or, or in, in anything in life. And so if you if you just actually show up and put in the work you've already succeeded mm. and and then it doesn't matter what people say and you just got to go behind yourself and just you know believe that that's all you need to do to to be successful how important is it uh, to surround yourself with the right people huge for me mm-hmm. massive i mean you got to keep in mind like i'm somebody who 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 started his life my whole life was around food and outings and shisha and this and that yeah. so the kind of people that i'm hanging out with they, 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 that's what they do, right? Mm-hmm. So then all of a sudden, I want to wake up at 5 a.m. to go swim like 7K, <laughs> and people are like, yeah. Uh, we'll you've be, changed, yeah, buddy. You've cho- <laughs> you've You're changed not the same one. Not for, not for good. <laughs> not for good, my friend. And so what ends up happening is, yeah, I think I lost a few friends over that, probably. But the real friends, I still have them. And you go through phases in your life, and it's fine. But yeah, surrounding yourself with the right people, the right mentality, and people who, who, who do the same stuff, Mm-hmm. pushes you forward keeps you accountable and it's fun at the end of the day guys it's supposed to be fun right of course yeah you gotta make it fun yeah on day three though <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll come back and uh, oh, um, we'll get all the details of how you can find out what's going to be going on and stuff over the next few months yeah stay updated and it, everything indeed in just a moment Mira Massa though first with Charlie XCX it's not a fan with Omar Samra and Omar Noor talking about this big challenge they're taking on in December Kelly Clarkson, and because of you. Hello to Rousey B, who says, I'm stuck in traffic and I missed my class, but honestly, I'm enjoying this, guys. Good luck with your journey. Stay positive and strong. Hanya also says, this is one of my favorite interviews. I've had so much fun listening to O2. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and also, uh, this uh, Hisham says, what a great way to start the day, listening to the words of achieved people like both Omars. Omar Samra, you are really uh, a role model. And Omar Noor, I'm really interested to know more about you, which I'll definitely find out. Oh, Have thanks. a good day, everyone. Oh, I love the positivity. Oh, yeah. uh, we're here with the guys here who are taking on uh, this uh, ridiculous challenge of, <laughs> uh, of rowing across uh, the Atlantic in December. What's it called? Are you guys giving the challenge a name? It's called the Atlantic Challenge. The okay. Atlantic Challenge. Yeah. That's, okay. the, well, name that's of, the name of the, yeah. of the, the name competition. Of the race, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we were O2. Like, so, we give that, that's our name. So okay. Who, who, el- who, who it's, a, it's a race. How, how many people take part in this? There's there's usually about um, fifteen twenty boats like a year, okay. um, and uh, everybody departs at the same time. Some mm. some people are in four man teams, three man, two and and solos, and uh, solos. Yeah, but, but literally yeah. like literally like twenty four hours after <sighs> you, or maybe a few hours after you leave the port, uh, no one sees each other, and then it's obviously mm. unsupported as well. How how many people actually make it to the end? How many boats? I think the majority of the boats end up doing it unless you have a critical failure or, you know... Get yeah, eaten biggest, by a shark. Well, eaten by a shark. <laughs> but actually, the signing up to the race is pretty self-selecting, you know? Yeah. You mm. know it's, a, yeah. it's a very big commitment of training, even just to get the, the money to, to be able to... I was going to say, this must cost a lot of money. Yeah. A lot yeah. of cash. It does, and of course, you know, we're not, we're not gonna sp- going out of pocket for this, so it's one of the big parts is the actual the commercial we get sponsors part of, it of, of trying to get um, the sponsors locked and loaded so we can buy the boat and we can do all the other pieces of, of this equation we, we're so we're doing everything in parallel 
Um, but we're quite confident that we can that can, can do put it. it all together. Is that yeah. this part of it then? This part is the bit where you're doing press and you're going round and you, you're building up the, the the interest in it and stuff like that. That's all part of of doing something like this. In a way, you mean you know, like being in a. Uh, I mean, I, I have a full time job. But, you know, I, I I used to be a banker, but now I, I run an adventure travel business. But but actually, being an adventure. In, in in today's you know day and age is a vocation you know mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. you you, you got to be able to 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 create the interest you got to be able to sustain yourself because i mean i've done a lot of different expeditions but i, I you know i haven't paid for any of them but sometimes i would want to do an expedition this year and I, it gets done three four years later because sometimes it's so hard to secure the interest and sponsorship mm-hmm. and of course you build on your track record and you and you build on that as you go and hopefully people trust you more and want to follow you and that creates you make, makes you a bit more of a a, a person. Well, I guess back. now that everybody knows who you are and you're famous uh, uh, here in Egypt, uh, people must come to you and say, "We want to be behind." Uh, it gets this. it gets easier. It's it's always challenging, but it, get, it gets easier for sure. But it's it's been a it's been a ten year journey. I mean, it's actually this month is the ten year anniversary of my Everest um, climb. It's wow. amazing. Wow! Congratulations on that. Yeah. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. What have you done, Omar Noor? Nothing. What no, have nothing. you climbed? I'm just, <laughs> it's, a, it's an embarrassment <laughs> to himself. Uh, uh, <laughs> there we go. Do you know something? I'm going to be carrying this guy. <laughs> like literally, not figuratively. <laughs> literally. right? I'm gonna be, that's why he chose me. I'm going to be his workhorse. <laughs> um, yeah, no. But I mean... Yeah, this is the thing is this is you think like as we as as our profiles go go, go up and people mm-hmm. start to know us, mm. people understand what we do. But in, in reality, and we were talking about this Omar and I the other day, a lot of time you get these like uh, people where, you, where are like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, uh, I'm a professional and, and my sister, I'm a professional tri- triathlete. I also run a, a, a company on, on on the side, but like my my day to day job is my professional triathlete. Like yeah yeah, but okay. So but what's your job? <laughs> like. I'm a professional. Oh no, no, no! I mean, how do you make your living? You know, and it's like, and Omar gets the same thing. It's like, what do you yeah. mean you climb mountains? Like, we don't understand. And I think it's just like the the old school mentality, the old way of thinking. You know, where where a job is a got to have a I, trade. Yeah, you, you have to have, have a yeah. trade. You have to yeah. have a lot of buttons in front of you and be able to <laughs> DJ. This, my you friend, know? is a proper job. Well, I know. See, exactly. Play, playing yeah. songs and talking yeah. in between, there's nothing. <laughs> I know. Well, as, as Egyptians, we usually have like, you know, you get doctor, lawyer, engineer. Yeah. You yeah. choose which one of the three you want. My yeah. parents were so disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, I, and I went to medical school in the U.S., oh, right? I, in pre-med, I mean. And and so you can imagine when... handy on the boat, though, weren't it? Well... Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I may mean, have to sit him up. Complete them. He didn't I complete didn't, it. I didn't right. go to medical. I just went to pre-med at, at Johns Hopkins yeah. University, nonetheless. You could but, probably put on a Band-Aid or something. Yeah, right. I'll figure it out. I'll <laughs> figure it out. How bad can well, it be? Omar and I, uh, last night, we spent <laughs> about 15, 20 minutes trying to make a cup of coffee. Oh, <laughs> can I, guys, can I tell you? No. Look, I thought I was in good hands. Mm-hmm. I think, look, Omar Samra, an adventurer. He's done all this. He, he does everything, right? Yeah. So we're at, we're at his place. We're hanging out. And I'm starting to fall asleep because I'm tired. And I'm like, hey, oh, you know what? I'm not ready to go to bed. There's so much to talk about. Can we can I get like, some caffeine? I'm like, I'm got, I got this. So I put yeah. out some water. I put it. I put the... It's not, and it's actually like real coffee. It's not like the instant stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so I, I, I proceed to put it into the thing like it's tea. And I stir. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty he's sure like, it's I'm not... He's like, I'm, like, sure, I'm pretty sure it's not the way to make coffee. Like, I don't know how it's made, but it's... But I'm saying, no, no, I'm pretty sure that okay. we, have, we have to actually Google it. We Googled it. Google, Google, Google how to make coffee. We're not going to have Google. I mean, who would have thought that Omar Samra does not know how to make a cup of coffee? Right? Do you know I'm what? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. That's all I yeah. can say. <laughs> you know, some, some things are strong in, some things yeah, not so but strong. You know, but you know, the, the good news is that we actually did make the coffee. It was pretty good in yeah. the end. And it so was fantastic. It, it was problem solving problem number one. Okay, that's uh, good. You've, you've achieved. We, we've achieved. Well, actually, on, a, on another note, actually, uh, Omar Omar came and, and visited me in Dubai and one of the things that we did I was like uh, we did a mm. little bit of things fun things like this with you guys making and, coffee and making yeah. coffee <laughs> making, learning how to make coffee and then we went out in the desert okay because okay. one of my favorite things to do since I've been injured is I have a massive truck and I go in the sand dunes and I do these crazy things and okay I made a mistake I made a, it happens right this is the part of how you learn I made a mistake the next thing you know the truck is basically on its side and the tire is off wow. and we have to be back to do a live news thing 
and literally which as missed, soon which we missed but uh, as soon as <laughs> as soon as we we dig ourselves in i'm talking everybody all right yeah everybody's fine cool all right guys let's go out on the, from the right hand and i'm talking and talking and uh, what's the plan anybody have any ideas that this is how i figure out i problem solve right okay literally i'm going to describe to you what omar samra did it happened he didn't say a word he just like he was in the in the passenger seat didn't say a word calmly opened the door waltzed <laughs> out of there and for the next 10 minutes observed everything from a sand dune not opening his mouth once <laughs> okay like, the first time he opened his mouth was only 10 minutes later later that night uh, yeah go ahead As assessing the situation is that yeah. what you were doing there or? yeah, yeah I, I ended up getting a, I ended up getting us a, a, a local Bedouin a man of the desert who proceeded to <laughs> To actually is, get, oh, get the car out of there. I mean, that is ridiculous. <laughs> the thing is this. Later that night, we had to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. I was like, yo, oh, around the fire, we're sitting down. I'm like, I mean, we're going to spend, you know, one, two months together. Mm -hmm. I, I need, he's like, and Omar is like, well, no, I mean, that's not the way I am. The way I am, if I have nothing constructive to say, then I just won't say it. That's true. That's a good way to be, yeah. I think. No. And, then I, and, then I just, huh? and then I, you remember, I was telling you guys about the movie Inside Out. Yeah. There's the character in that movie called Joy, uh -huh. which is kind of close to, about 15 minutes into the movie, I wanted to murder the <laughs> character. <laughs> which is not Joy very is well. Joy is fun. Joy is fun. Do you know, I, I sympathize with Omar Noor because I'm like him. I will yeah. talk my way through. It every, like a, if there's an awkward like silence, I don't allow them to have happens that's and, and, and why that, yeah right exactly and I'm then so Sally, and the other thing is this yeah is in your silence in your half thoughts mm -hmm. maybe if you said something it could trigger a thought that maybe you don't come up with it exactly but, but i build on what you do and then we go back and forth and we play a little <laughs> bit of tennis. i don't i don't think this is going to work guys, <laughs> <laughs> guys well, i think we discovered right here right now we're, we're off um, we'll, we'll take we'll come december 12th we'll take over the show for a couple of months oh uh, yeah you, okay oh please you do <laughs> perfect uh, now uh, you're going to be on the boat uh, in the middle of the Atlantic uh, for New Year's. Yes. Uh, have you any plans of what you will do to see in uh, 20, whatever it is, 18? Nothing. That's no. the answer. Nothing. Because whatever he's going to want to bring on the boat <laughs> is going to weigh. It's going to be weigh. It's going to weigh in the boat. It's going to slow me down. It's not going to allow us to win the race. Okay. So right. we get nothing. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like a little pop. <laughs> A party popper, like a. <laughs> okay, fine. Woo. No, I think we'll we'll definitely celebrate. Fine. Okay. Um, maybe in the, maybe under a the swim. Stars. Maybe a swim, right? Maybe a little because yeah. everyone. Yeah. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll do a little paddle, like something. Like yeah. Something, like roll yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Synchronized <laughs> swimming. Yeah, I love <laughs> that. Would seas. be lovely. Yeah. <laughs> that will also be on video, and we'll send it to you. <laughs> Well, listen, guys, how can people keep up with you and find out what's going on over the next uh, few months in your preparations and, of course, uh, when you're uh, going to be on, this, on the ocean? So, Omar Noor is o.n.try on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Omar Samra. And we're also on, on Facebook. And uh, we, 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 don't, we don't necessarily have a, a, a social media for the actual row. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we'll have a website that will track mm -hmm. actually where we are on the actual row. But the, the, our individual social media is probably the way to keep, uh, keep okay. following. And I think you can see the links uh, on our Facebook page and our Twitter as well. Yes, you can. Yeah, so you got can, also Omar Samra and Omar Noor's uh, Twitter accounts, which you can yes, follow. Yes, you can follow those. If you go through our, our uh, Facebook and our Twitter, uh, you can find them there. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure and a joy. It's over? Yeah, it's over. <laughs> Oh. I know. I know. Omar, Omar hates the limelight. He's, uh, <laughs> he's a shrinking like, violence. Are you take, saying take, that take this away is not the fun? Cameras, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> not the mic. I'm so shy. <laughs> Uh, Omar Noor, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Omar Sabra, thank you very much as thank well. You, you both really do have to come back again yes, and come fill back, us promise. in. Come back before you go and let us know how you're, you're getting on with your preparations and everything. Sounds Absolutely great. That would be great. Love it. Thanks, guys, guys, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Omar Noor, Omar Sabra, get on there, find out what they're doing and keep up with everything. This is 9FM. So